In this video, we're going to look at another term symbols example to see what happens when we have multiple partially filled subshells. So this example is going to be the S1, P1 configuration, something that you don't usually see in traditional uh, Aufbau uh, filling up of the atomic orbitals. But let's say, for example, we had some excited state beryllium atom where we took what would normally be in the ground state 1s2, 2s2 for beryllium's four electrons, and we promote one of those 2s electrons up to the 3p subshell. So this is an excited state, not the ground state, not the lowest energy that beryllium atom that a beryllium atom can have. Okay, so what would be our term symbols in that example. So to calculate the number of determinants we're expecting to have, we do it the same way we would if we had a single partially filled subshell, but then we take all of those results and multiply them together at the end. So how many different ways <clears throat> can we arrange one electron into six spin orbitals in our P subshell over here? That would be six choose one, which is going to be six. How many ways can we arrange one electron in two spin orbitals in our S subshell? That would be two choose one, which is going to be two. So that's going to equal six times two equals 12. So what you'll notice here is I have all the possibilities for filling up my P orbitals for a given S orbital here, and then all of those possibilities again for my other configuration. So it's really just, it's a direct multiplication of the combination of these two sets of determinants, the way these combine here. And then once I have generated uh, these 12 determinants here, all of my unique determinants, then the procedure is exactly the same as before, as if we had just a single, uh, as if we had a single partially filled subshell. So I'm going to go through the rest of this procedure here, but at a uh, more abbreviated and rapid pace than before, because we've already seen two examples for how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to fill out m sub l, adding up the values for the m sub l quantum number from the occupied uh, spin orbitals here. So plus one, zero, minus one, zero, add them all up. That is going to give me, let's see, plus one, plus one, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, then that pattern is going to repeat as I have drawn it. Okay, then for m sub s, uh, ha add a half every time you have a spin up electron, subtract a half every time you have a spin down electron. So up, up is plus 1, down, up is 0. That pattern repeats twice going down here. Then we have up, down is zero. Down, down is minus one. And that pattern repeats twice. Okay, so what is our maximum value of m sub s that we see? Max m sub s. Let's draw that a little better. And, okay, max of m sub s is going to equal 1. That's the largest value for m sub s I see there. And our max, if I can get the right color I want, max for m sub l equals 1. So according to the rules from the previous video, that gives me possibilities for term symbols which include triplet P, triplet S, singlet P, and singlet S, listing them in the order from starting at the highest M, starting at the highest S and highest L, decreasing L, then going down S. So the outer loop is decreasing S, the inner loop is decreasing L. Okay, and what do we have here? We're gonna look for our triplet P. Do we have something where m sub s equals one and m sub l equals one as would be necessary for a triplet p. Do we have that? Yes, we do. So we're going to have a triplet p term symbol. 
Okay, what are all the determinant what are all the determinants that we have to cross out to do so? So for m sub l and m sub s, if I have s equals one and l equals zero, as it is for triplet p, two s plus one is three, s equals one, p is l equals one. We need all of these products for plus one, zero, minus one, plus one, zero, minus one. We're expecting there to be nine determinants because that is the value of 2s plus 1 times 2l plus 1 is 1 times 1 plus 1 is 3. 1 times 1 plus 1 is 3 equals 9. That's going to be all those cross pairs there. So as we go down this, plus 1 plus 1, cross off that plus one zero, plus one minus one, uh, there it is, zero plus one, zero zero, zero minus one, minus one plus one, minus one zero, and minus one minus one. Okay, so that's our triplet P term symbol. Is there another triplet P here? We look again to see if there is another uh, M sub S equals one, M sub L equals one. So is there another? Do we have M sub S equals one, M sub L equals one in anything that we haven't crossed off? I do not see such term symbol, so I'm going to say no. So now we move on. Our next thing we're looking for is if there is a triplet S. So a triplet S would be M sub S equals one for triplet, M sub L equals zero for S. So do we have a term symbol where we have M sub S equals one and M sub L equals zero? I do not see one, so we are going to say that we do not have a triplet S. Okay, moving down the line for singlet P, what do we need for a singlet P? Do we have M sub S equals zero for singlet, M sub L equals one for P? Do we have a determinant where we have M sub L equals zero and M sub, sorry, M sub L equals one and M sub S equals zero? Uh, that's what I see right here, so I'm going to say yes, that we do. So we do have a singlet P. Okay, and the determinants that we need to find, there are going to be three. 2s plus 1 times 2l plus 1 is going to be 1 times 3 for this case. It's three, which is going to equal three, which is convenient because out of the 12 that we originally had, we've crossed out nine, so now we have three left. That's also a good sign that that number is possible given the number of determinants that we have total. Okay, so we have M sub L values are going to be for an L equals one, possible values are plus one, zero, and minus one. M sub S for a value of s equals zero is going to be zero. So three combinations we are looking for here. I'm gonna start out with plus one, zero. That one, zero, zero, there it is. And minus one, zero. Okay, so those are those three. We have found all the determinants that we need for a triplet P. And notice that there are no determinants left. We could also check again if we would find another singlet P. Uh, we don't have another singlet P. There are no determinants left. We also wouldn't have a zero, zero that we need for the singlet S. Okay, so that leaves us with our final term symbols that we're going to have are going to be triplet P and singlet P. We could further break these down if we want to into the allowed values of J. Um, you can look for yourself and convince yourself from the previous videos what those values should be. I'll just go ahead and write down, so we should have triplet P2, triplet P1, 
triplet P0, and a singlet P1. So that's our algorithm for determining term symbols when we have multiple partially uh, filled subshells. If we added a third, the procedure would just be multiply again and add in and do all the possible combinations of those as well. This generalizes to all possible combinations that you can imagine. So once we have uh, drawn out all these individual determinants and gotten that, then the procedure is exactly the same as before, and we end up with our nice uh, algorithm that generates our set of term symbols in the end.